Welcome. You're listening to Ask the Doulas, a podcast where we talk to experts from all over the country about topics related to pregnancy, birth, postpartum, and early parenting. Let's chat. Hello, hello. This is Kristen Revere with Ask the Doulas, and I am thrilled to chat with Lynn Schulte today. Lynn is the founder of the Institute for Birth Healing, and our topic is all about postpartum healing and recovery after birth. Welcome, Lynn. Thanks, Kristen, so much. I so appreciate any opportunity I get to be able to share what I know and to help moms. So happy to have all of your wisdom here for our listeners. Would you start by filling us in on your extensive bio? I was looking at over all of your skill sets and you have a wealth of experience in not only pelvic floor physical therapy, but also just healing in general and body work. Yeah. So I've been a physical therapist for over 30 years and have taken lots of different continued education courses. But I would say that my specialty really is connecting a person to a deeper part of themselves and really trying to tap into my gift is being able to understand why the body's doing what it's doing and getting to the root cause of tension in the body or why a muscle won't let go. And that is just something that I've discovered and, and developed over the year on my own, not from necessarily taking a particular course. So I love that deeper healing work and really working with trauma because that's the trauma response in the body can sometimes cause a freeze response in the body. And then the tissues don't really know the trauma event is over. And that freeze response is still held in the tissues. So I love that deeper dive. And so, you know, we can, there's, when we talk about postpartum healing, there's healing on many different levels, there's physical healing. And that's what we really want to talk about today, emotional healing. And there's energetic healing too, that just, I want people to recognize that there is more when the physical healing isn't really working that there's a deeper issue that may be at play that's keeping that physical healing from happening. Makes sense. Yes. So what are your top tips for listeners when they are preparing for birth? And then we'll talk about healing. So really, we need to understand that what we bring to our birth that's being held in our body is going to impact that birth. So it's really about getting your body assessed prior to going into labor and making sure that the baby has the space and the balance within your uterus and your abdomen to get into a good position to come on out, making sure that your pelvic bones have the ability to move open for baby to pass through and then releasing your pelvic floor muscles as well and making sure that those are like trampolines are able to bounce and give and lengthen to allow the baby to come on out. And so I think every pregnant person should not only just be seeing a OBGYN or a midwife, but also a body worker, someone who is trained in what to look for and how to help create balance and space for baby and assess the body so that baby can come on out. We go into birth just assuming the baby will come on out. And I think that that's right. I think we should be assessing the body more to make sure that it's, it's ready for birth. And I feel like there are more and more trained body balancing practitioners, especially in my area. So it is a great referral source in addition to physical therapy, pelvic floor, you know, therapy, not only during pregnancy, but also immediately postpartum. Right. And I think it's really important. I think the most important aspect of the body, well, two is one, the the uterine ligaments, making sure that those are nice and released and and balanced, but also making sure that your pelvic floor muscles have the ability to lengthen for birth is critical and that you know how to push a baby out. Too many people that I work with in my practice come in and I ask them to push my, I'm intravaginal and I ask them to push my my fingers out, actually tighten their pelvic floor. And I think- happening at birth. And that's what can create those stage three, stage four tears that go into the anal structure. And we really want to try to avoid that. And we do that by making sure the muscles lengthen when you're pushing. And tearing is one of the biggest concerns my childbirth students um, have as, as well as my birth doula clients is the fear of 
tearing is really overwhelming to them and they want to know how to prevent it. So very good tips. Yeah. And I don't, you know, people talk about doing perennial massage and the research is really isn't confirming one way or another saying that it's helpful. But my thought is that we need to be focusing on the pelvic floor muscles themselves, not just that perennial area, like the opening of your vaginal space. That opening is not where we need to focus. We need to be getting our fingers in deeper and working with the pelvic floor muscles because I feel like the skin is going to follow the muscles. So if the muscles can lengthen and relax, the skin's going to follow. Makes perfect sense. So after delivery, then let's get into concerns. You mentioned tearing, of course, and healing and what your tips are, whether it's a minor tear or you're dealing with a fourth degree? So one of the biggest issues that I find postpartum is that the bones of the pelvis actually need open up for a baby to come on out. So the two sit bones that you're sitting on, your tailbone, all three of those bones need to open up. So your sit bones go wider and your tailbone should lift backwards, which is really hard to do when you're laying on your back, trying to push a baby out. So that- right. In lithotomy position that the doctors find so convenient for them is actually not always the best position for a birthing person to be in because the sacrum needs to lift backwards in order for that baby to come on out. And if you're laying on it, then the entire pelvis has to lift up for the baby to come on out. But this, the pelvic outlet, so from tip of tailbone to those ischial tuberosities, that needs to widen for a baby to come on out. And I have found what I want everyone to know is that not all time do those bones go back to their original position. I find open birthing pattern in the majority of the clients that I work with in the clinic, whether they're coming to me for back pain, pelvic pain, symphysis, pubis dysfunction, pelvic floor tension or tightness or pain, pain with intercourse, prolapse, stress incontinence, all of those issues that are very common after having a baby can be contributed to the bones of the pelvis not being in their original position. And when you know what to look for and you know how to close the bones back up to help them get into their proper place, a lot of those problems go away, especially the back pain, the pelvic pain. Now, some of the signs that your pelvis may be stuck in an open birthing pattern is when you lay on a hard surface, your sacrum doesn't feel good. It hurts to lay on a hard surface on your back. If you're sitting, sometimes sitting feels off balance or off kilter because one of your sit bones had to move out to the side more than the other one. One of the key factors that you know, if you go see a pelvic floor PT and if they, and you're working in the postpartum period and they don't ask you what position you were in when your baby came out, they're not going to be looking at the bones of the pelvis. Uh, And a a lot of the pelvic floor PTs do not get this concept unless they've trained with me. I'm the only one out there talking about this idea of an open birthing pattern. And so I do have a directory on my website of practitioners that I've trained. So you can go and see if there's someone in your area, but this idea that the bones don't always go back to the original position is not something that every practitioner out there is looking for. And very interesting. And so I do have clients because we have postpartum doulas at Gold Coast as well as birth doulas. So we're working with our clients up to the first year and they have that lower back discomfort, especially with breastfeeding in those healing, you know, first six weeks. And so that sounds like obviously an issue that could be prevented and addressed, you know, early on. Absolutely. And and there is an exercise that people can do resisting their knees together and resisting their knees going apart. I have a YouTube video on my YouTube channel, which is Institute for Birth Healing is the channel on YouTube. And if you go in there and just search for closing the bones after birth, an exercise to close the bones after birth, I think it's titled that, but it shows you how to do it. And I believe in the video, I show someone doing it to you, but if you just bend your knees up, you can use your own fists and your own hands to resist those movements. So you don't need someone externally to help you. You can do this to yourself. Just bend your knees up towards your chest and do the exercises. But those, you're, we're using the adductors of your hip muscles and the abductors to help bring the bones of the pelvis back together again. So sometimes that can be really helpful for some people. The sooner we do that, the better. So I really wish 
Every doula knew how to instruct their clients in doing that because that can be done right after birth. We don't need to wait as long as it doesn't create pain. If it creates pain, then try the opposite direction. And then if that's still painful, that person needs help. They need to find a practitioner who knows how to work with the bones of their pelvis to help bring them back into the place. And if you are a mom and you're working with a pelvic floor PT or a chiropractor, let them know. I have online courses. They, treating the postpartum pelvis is an online course that I have that a practitioner can take. My courses are only for practitioners because you need to have a license to touch to do these techniques that you'll learn in my courses. Let your practitioner know, go take that course and then come help me. That's the yes. best way for you to get help because that the treating the postpartum pelvis course is there's four different patterns I find in the pelvis after birth. And it teaches practitioners how to close up the bones, how to get rid of those patterns in the pelvis after birth. And I tell you, moms, every day in my clinic, mom gets off of the table and they feel so much better, so different in their body after birth because I've adjusted their pelvic bones and got them back into a better position because the pelvic floor muscles attached to those bones. So if the bones are splayed open from a baby coming out, your pelvic floor muscles are now lengthened. They're on strut. And sometimes the tension or the heaviness that you're feeling in your pelvic floor or in your perennial area could be because those muscles are trying to keep your bones together. They're trying uh, yes. to help you out. And so if you go and you see a pelvic floor therapist and they like try to release the tension without adjusting the bones, then it could make your pain worse. They're taking the, the job away from the muscles. The muscles are trying to stabilize you. And if they try to release those muscles and they haven't stabilized your bones, your pain can get worse. So please know that. And if your client, if your physical therapist or your chiropractor, I know chiropractors are adjusting the bones, but they're not looking at the bones of the pelvis in the way that I teach. There's different motions that the pelvis goes through that everybody agrees on, but nobody's really agreeing to this idea that the bones of the pelvis can stay stuck in an open birthing pattern. And it's funny, yes. Chris, because so many lay people and doulas as well, they're like, oh, that makes so much sense. It does. Absolutely. <laughs> and I remember in my early years as a doula, I attended a Zulu workshop and there was a closing of the bones ritual. Now That's that true. was more symbolic and healing yes. after birth. And, you know, it wasn't necessarily dealing with your topic in general, but that term was very right. familiar to me. Hey, Alyssa here. I'm just popping in to tell you about our course called Becoming. Becoming a mother is your guide to a confident pregnancy and birth all in a convenient six week online program. From birth plans to sleep training and everything in between, you'll gain the confidence and skills you need for a smooth transition to motherhood. You'll get live coaching calls with Kristen and myself, a bunch of expert videos, including chiropractic care, pelvic floor physical therapy, mental health experts, breastfeeding, and much more. You'll also get a private Facebook community with other mothers going through this at the same time as you to offer support and encouragement when you need it most. And then of course, you'll also have direct email access to me and Kristen in addition to the live coaching calls. If you'd like to learn more about the course, you can email us at info at goldcoastdoulas.com or check it out at thebecomingcourse.com. We'd love to see you there. Right. And that's a beautiful ceremony. It's a beautiful idea. I love it, but it may not address everything. Okay. Right. Because, because the hip bones are in the way to really moving the ischial bones back place, back into place. And that sacrum being backwards might need some external mobilization. So I do have a free course on my website. It's the sacral flexion pattern. So again, this is for practitioners, the common postpartum patterns, anyone can sign up and take a look at. I, I go into more detail of all the different things that can happen in the postpartum body, but the sacral flexion pattern is really for practitioners. And it, I teach practitioners how to treat the sacral flexion pattern. And that is a game changer because again, like I said, the pelvic floor muscles are on stretch. When we bring those bones back together, then the pelvic floor muscles are in a much better 
position to be stronger. And there's a couple other things that can limit a pelvic floor muscle's strength. And tearing is one of those things that we talked about. That When we have scar tissue in there, scar tissue is not as flexible as normal, healthy muscle tissue. And so- exactly. The scar tissue can inhibit that muscle from being able to, to function well, but you as yourself, you can get in there and, and massage that scar tissue, just offer compression to it and squeeze it and see if you can't get it to like melt between your fingers, because that, that can help minimize the amount of scar tissue in there. The other thing I want to make people aware of is when we're stuck in this open birthing pattern and these pelvic floor muscles are on strat, trying to have intercourse can be really, really painful because the muscles, the vaginal opening is, is on stretch. It can't open up more to allow the penis to come in. And so that insertional pain is the pelvic floor muscles are not happy. They need help relaxing so that the penis can insert without pain. We need to release that scar tissue. We need to relax the pelvic floor muscles to help with insertional pain with intercourse. There's also deep thrusting pain with intercourse, which can be from the cervix not being able to move out of the way and scar tissue from C-section scars can cause that. And so back to... Another issue for why the pelvic floor muscles can't be strong after birth is that as that baby comes on out, it smushes the bladder out of the way and it can smush it off to a side and then the bladder gets stuck over there. And I can find the cervix in any position intravaginally after birth. It can be stuck to your right wall, your left side vaginal wall. It can be pulled back. It can be poking into your bladder. If it's poking into your bladder, you, have, you feel like you have to pee all the time. And so getting that cervix back into its midline position by balancing the uterine ligaments and getting the bladder back into place instantaneously changes the strength of the pelvic floor muscles. And That's amazing. Um, because that is a common natural. concern is that, yeah, frequent urge to urinate after, yeah. you know, in that postpartum healing phase. And that stress incontinence, when the bladder is off of the side, the pressure from your abdomen can't reach the urethra. And so that's why the pressure only hits the bladder. And so that's why we leak. And if we can get the bladder back into place, then some of that abdominal pressure can hit the re urethra and the bladder and keep the differentiation of pressure inside so that you don't leak. So that's a, a bigger concept than most people might understand there. And I've really simplified it, but there is a reason with the bladder being off that can cause stress incontinence. Another thing that can cause stress incontinence is that your lower belly is jutting out when you go to laugh, cough, sneeze, which increases pressure on your bladder. So your upper abdominal muscles are pushing down, causing your belly to jut outward and that can increase pressure. And every time you do that, you can be leaking urine. So you need to learn how to get your lower a belly muscles activating stronger than your upper ones to keep the pressure away from the bladder when you laugh, cough, sneeze. So if people just put their hands on their lower belly and they cough, the belly should draw up and in. If it's pushing out, that's something that you need to work with for your belly. Excellent yeah. tip. And so another common postpartum concern is hemorrhoids. How would some of your tips factor in there? Yeah. So the hemorrhoids are around the anal sphincter muscle and the anal sphincter muscle, I find knots in most every single postpartum person that I work with. And the anal sphincter muscle gets so stretched out from the way the babies come on out vaginally. And those knots can create problems with hemorrhoids and also fissures. So a fissure is a tear inside the rectal anal canal that every time you have a bowel movement, you're opening up that wound and it really feels like you're pooping glass and it's so painful. So anytime anyone's dealing with hemorrhoids or fissures, you need to release the knot in your anal sphincter muscle. And it's super easy to do the top half. You can just put your thumb in vaginally and your finger in on the anus and just kind of press around and see if you feel any knots or tenderness. But to do the lower half of the anus, you need to maybe put your thumb in on the anus and kind of push down. If you think about the anus like a clock, you should be able to push in all different hours of the clock and they should feel nice and mushy and mobile. But if it's harder or thicker, that's a tension in that muscle and it needs release work. Compression of that knot in that muscle can help it to release. And so if you can check that out yourself and try to release what you can, if not, one of my practitioners who've taken my postpartum course can help you out 
and they know how to release it. And then they can show you how to continue to do it yourself because you definitely want to do, if you're dealing with a fissure, you definitely want to release your anal sphincter muscle before every single bowel movement. Excellent. So is there a point where it would be recommended to release some of that tension? Would it be immediately after birth or waiting for six weeks or? It depends on if you have any tearing. So you need to okay. let, you need to let any tearing or episiotomy guard tissue heal well, because it's going to be way too uncomfortable if you still have stitches in there or you have an open wound with a fissure. I find the open wound is opposite of where the tension is. So if you have a sense of where the pain is in your rectum, as you're having a bowel movement, try assessing the opposite side of that circle and seeing if you can release that tissue that can help because it's a circle muscle. It all needs to open up evenly to allow the stool to come on out. When we have those knots, that knot area can't open up as freely. So the opposite side has to open up more. Something's got to give in order for that stool to come out. And that's why tears open is because too much pressure is happening there because the opposite side can't open as well. So releasing that allows that sphincter muscle to open up more evenly and it takes the strain off that open wound and that's what helps it to heal. But so I'm saying like, if you tore it vaginally and you had an episiotomy, wait for that tissue to heal before you still go messing around in it. But if you have a fissure and an open wound, you want to try to work with the anus outside prior to having bowel movements to help that to heal. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So any other tips or healing conditions that we didn't discuss? Oh, there's so much. There's diastasis recti and, and you need to uh, release the oblique muscles for that. So I, there's an oblique release that needs to happen to help speed up the healing of diastasis. And then understanding how the belly gets messed up from birth. All that is covered in my confidence in the core floor and more course. That course is designed for moms. So you guys can check that one out. All the other courses on my website are for practitioners, but that has a ton of information in it that can help you understand why your body is, is being the way it is and what you're experiencing. And that confidence in the core floor and more online course is appropriate for anyone to take. So there's more information there. And then I really just want postpartum people to know that healing is possible. Doctors don't give you that sense. So they're just kind of like, oh, well, you had a baby. What do you expect? And there is healing that it can occur no matter how old your baby is. Please know that there is support for you to feel better in your body after birth. And if you've been working with a pelvic floor PT, or you've been seeing a chiropractor for a while, and you're not getting results, please check out one of my birth healing practitioners on my website. My directory will be in the show notes. Check out that link to the directory and see if there's someone nearby. And also recognize that if you feel your birth was traumatic, you need to work with the trauma from that birth first. And that is something that I can assist people with via Zoom. Uh, you do not need to be in person to do that trauma release work that can be done over zoom. So you can reach out to me center for birth healing is my clinical practice and just reach out, fill out a form and we'll get in touch and we can set something up. So that is how I would like to support moms knowing that there's practitioners that I've trained that know what I've talked about here today and they can support you. I also have a Facebook group Institute for birth healing community that not all of my practitioners who have studied with me are on my directory yet I'm working okay. on, it. but there are lots of others who have taken my courses that just are not in that directory. And so come finding my Institute for birth healing community group is another avenue to try to connect with someone in your area. So ask to join that and there's practitioners and moms in there alike, and you can see if there's someone in your area that people recommend. Excellent. You shared so much wisdom in 30 minutes. Great. Any other social channels you'd like to promote outside of the Facebook group and your website? Yeah. So Institute for Birth Healing on Instagram. 
So join me there and you can hear what I have to say on Instagram too. And then you, I told, talked about the YouTube channel as well. So those are the best channels for me. Thank you. Thanks so much. We'll have to have you on again, Lynn. Absolutely. I would love that. Take care. Thanks for listening to Ask the Doulas. For more information about Gold Coast Doulas, visit us on our website, goldcoastdoulas.com. We're also on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and give us a five-star review. Thank you. Remember, these moments are golden.